familiar with meta meditation? Okay, good, so not that many people. Um, because when I first heard about meta, it feels like an Amway conference, doesn't it? Like I'm not, I'm not sure. yeah. And you too, if you apply yourself and are proactive, there are timeshares all throughout the American Southwest. Um, so meta, I thought meta was like M-E-T-A, like it would be like maximum meditation. Um, and meta is actually, it's, I think it's from Pali, it's an old language, and uh, it means loving kindness. And the reason I'm here is I'm sort of an accidental meditation teacher because I started meditating oh yeah, about 30 years ago. And in those 30 years, I've tried so many different types of meditation. And so I had my own subjective experience of like what works, what doesn't seem to work, what seems to work for other people, what, what are the big hindrances. And um, so I've been both like a student of meditation and an accidental meditation teacher for, for a while now. Um, and by the way, we're gonna meditate at some point. And if you don't want to, that's fine. You can just sit there and like check Facebook or whatever. Um, <laughs> But, so the, some other questions I have. My first question, who here meditates? Okay, nice. Who here thinks they should meditate more? Who here thinks they should meditate better? See, this is the problem. Because I go to classes, and I watch the way people respond to meditation. I watch the way I respond to meditation, and there's so much self-criticism. And there's all these, like, terrible, unrealistic expectations. Like just crazy, nameless, vague expectations of, oh, well, those old brown people in Southeast Asia must meditate differently and I can't do it, so there's something wrong with me because I don't want to sit on my mat for 14 hours a day. Um, or looking at like, like being in meditation class and looking at someone and they're like sitting there all smug and smiley and you're just like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> I, you're like, but then in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, maybe that person has figured it out, but I still hate them. Um, and then the problem of, am I doing the right type of meditation? You're like, so suppose you're doing Zen meditation, maybe you're thinking, oh, well, I hear TM is really good. And then you're doing TM, and you're like, oh, well, I hear Vipassana is really good. And then you're doing Vipassana, but you're like, oh, but... Um, Noah Levine is teaching a different type of Vipassana across town, so maybe all my restlessness and discontentedness would go away if only I was studying with the right teacher, in the right place, applying myself and not checking Facebook and not doing all these other things. And like, it's all pointless self-criticism. At least that's been my experience, because I'm really good at being self-critical. And so I've observed all this stuff in other people, but I observe it in myself. Like, I'll be in a class, and the teacher will be leading me in something and I'll be annoyed. And then my thoughts are like, am I annoyed because the teacher's terrible? Am I annoyed because I'm doing it wrong? Hello, bug. Am I annoyed because this is the wrong type? Of, like all these questions, but they all serve as opportunities for me to be self-critical. And one thing I have found, and I can say this, I believe pretty categorically and objectively, there's no benefit to self-criticism when it comes to meditation. And there's no such thing as the perfect meditation practice. Um, so if, if, like me, you're self-critical when it comes to meditation, if possible, just stop being self-critical. Recognize, like, no one's doing it better. And if they are, there's a good chance they were trained in it from the time they were two years old and they don't have electricity. Because um, I do think that's another, in all of our pursuits, whether it's meditation, whether it's yoga, these practices need to meet us, this is my belief, need to meet us where we are. Instead of us self-remonstrating and beating ourselves up because we are not in the same mind space as someone who existed 6,000 miles away from here a, a thousand years ago, like, times were different back then. Like, I'm guessing when people studied meditation a thousand years ago, they were already pretty calm. Because they probably were all pretty well rested, and maybe they hadn't discovered caffeine. And they certainly didn't have electricity, so they were like, you know, 6 p.m. rolls around, the sun goes down, they'd sit around and be bored, which could also lead to calm. So they're, they're already here, so meditating, 
pretty easy to go to here. But like with us, we have all these stressors, like countless myriad stressors. And I'm stating the obvious, of course, but like traffic, electricity, um, a thousand friends on Facebook when you only know ten of them, et cetera, et cetera. Like all these things that are like agitating us, like work that we don't like. And then just the general fears of the human condition of like we're getting older, we're getting, sometimes we get sick, people around us get sick and die, like life is filled with stressors and beating ourselves up via our spiritual practices or our yoga practices is just so pointless. And I'm not saying that as a form of criticism, I'm saying that to myself as well because almost every practice I've done, I've been convinced I could have done it better. Mm. Um, or I've been convinced I should have been doing something else, or convinced that like the person on the mat next to me or someone else is like they've figured it out and I hate them for it. 